He was a holy being, and he became known as uh, Yei Jin, or the Black Yei. He threw a temper tantrum, which is to say it is an evil way, and the um, power that uh, Yei Jin has over the, um, the physical senses, they say, this is joy, this is happiness, this is confidence, this is peace. We are told that he cannot make that feeling and those conditions permanent. <laughs> Among our Diné, there are a lot of different uh, subjects in that that uh, we can't just give out a lot of information about. And uh, some of the information they say is very sacred. And it is that uh, there has to be special settings in that where we can share such information. But the other thing and the other reason that they don't allow or even encourage us to share information about is because some subject matter are considered very evil and to talk about them you give the evilness power and power of influence and so they kind of uh, discourage us on talking about such things but uh, I believe that people need to know certain things and about one of those subjects is uh, one of the holy people we we're told way back in the first world and in the second world um, he was a holy being just like all of the holy people. And there had to be people in charge, even way back then. And so there were select people or beings and that that were that we refer to now in this the third world. We refer to those people as holy people. And so there was one that uh, was among the other people that were considered holy people. And he wanted to do certain things. And uh, the other holy people would not agree with him and would not consent to what he wanted to do. And so the story is told about this uh, one being. And he became known as uh, Yei Jin, or the black uh, Yei, or the black uh, holy person. And it is that uh, because he wasn't getting people to agree with him, he threw a temper tantrum. And um, he set fire to that world. Now, this uh, setting fire to the second world is what I understood this uh, problem occurred. But uh, some say it was in the first world. But I think it was probably in the second world that uh, Yeish Jin threw a temper tantrum. And... Uh, at the whole chain is the way that they say he became very angry. And Ndi uh, is a very important word because uh, today in the world that we are in, in the third world, we have a ceremony that's called which is to say that is to, uh, to say that when we become a disagreeable person, and we do things contrary to the ways that uh, the holy people intended for us to experience existence, that we go against the very teachings of the holy people. And if you avoid that and you stray away from it, you do it because... So there's a ceremony that's called... And, uh, but we understand the other word that is used to kind of make us better understand... Is to say it is an evil way, or the bad way, or the not the good way. And the uh, is a ceremony that I don't even like to uh, sit through. I don't enjoy that ceremony. Maybe it's because there's so much information that's lacking about it, or maybe it's because the uh, some of the ceremonies and portions of the ceremony are not something I believe that should be performed because in parts of the prayers and parts of the songs on that they ask that that person or that patient be allowed to put their hands where the uh, evil yei puts his hands or to stand in the footprints of that evil uh, holy person and so the songs and prayers are set, set in that way and to me that's not right to ask to be put in the same position as this evil yei or yei jin or he has another uh, way of being uh, referred to. Uh, Bichindi is some, sometimes the way that they uh, describe him. Bichindi. And so 
even today, if we were to refer to something in the form of a, a devil, and such words as that are what is used to refer to that yeish gene. And uh, yeish gene, as I've mentioned, is the, uh, the uh, black holy person. And uh, he came about because he had, couldn't get people to agree with him, so he set fire to, in my interpretation, the second world. And so everybody had to make plans to abandon that second world because that fire is still raging. And uh, so we have that condition. But Yeish Jin, one of his great powers is to have power over our physical senses of the sight, smell, touch, taste, and hearing. And uh, so he deceives us with these particular powers that he has over our senses. And so we have to be very careful on the things that we see and the things that we hear and smell, touch, and taste. And because um, Yeish Jin or Bichindi or has he, these powers over those particular senses and feelings and that. And so it is that we can be deceived by any one of those uh, senses and that that we have. And uh, the thing that we are told, Atachanib is uh, the word that I would use, is that uh, we can be deceived uh, by looking at certain things and actually seeing it with our two eyes and we can be deceived. Or by listening to something, then it can be deceiving. And by touching something or smelling it and tasting it, we can be deceived and we can also begin to use that deception in our lives and it becomes habits that are not good. And the uh, power that uh, Yeish Jin has over the, uh, the physical senses, they give false signals to things to say, this is joy, this is happiness, this is confidence, this is peace. But in his way, we are told that he cannot make that feeling and those conditions permanent. They are temporary. So it is that whatever you see or smell or touch or taste or hear, they might bring pleasure for a moment, but then that fades. And so we have to be very careful on not to be deceived by the powers that uh, Black Yay has over our physical senses. And it is something that we have to be very aware of today. We hear a lot of times, uh, uh, some of the people, the older people that I have been able to meet with and sit and discuss some of these uh, presentations we've made. And one thing that they really say that we are losing our young people because they are listening to people that are not knowledgeable about our traditional ways and our traditional teaching. People today are teaching our young children all these misleading misinformation, referring to their own feelings and their own particular understanding of things they see, hear, smell, touch, taste, or hear. And we have to be very cautious on the things that we are told by other people that don't have our understanding of the things that our people have experienced. And so the teachings of our people are very simple, but very uh, profound in the ways that they have uh, come to these conclusions. So it is that black yay, yay Jean, the uh, one that is always willing to take you astray by allowing you to listen or encourage you to listen to things that aren't true or to see things that aren't good or to touch things that aren't good for you and to smell and taste and all these senses and that he has special control over. And so those are the things that we are told. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching our videos. If you like what you see, don't forget to uh, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss one of our uploads. Also, head over to our website, NavajoTraditionalTeachings.com. Sign up for our email list. Okay. <laughs>